And now, we return to the purveyors of real estate knowledge, Your Real Estate Chalk Talk. Hi, welcome back to the program. This is Keith Itner with Your Real Estate Chalk Talk here in the studio with Keith Itner Jr. at my side. You can reach us at 612-627-8000. That's 612-627-8000. Uh, give us a call. We'd be happy to talk to you, and we will help you in any way that we can, all with no cost and absolutely no obligation. Uh, I was really excited, I mentioned earlier, uh, to have uh, Sean Morrissey with Morrissey Builders on the program because I was looking at his website and, and I told Keith this morning at Goffey, I, I, could talk, I could have a whole hour on this. On this, I mean, this could be a show for me because it's uh, so darn interesting to me. When we went out to break last time, we were talking a little bit about Passive House. And, and uh, uh, my brother lives in, in uh, or lived, now he's moved to Hawaii, but he lived in Winona and his house Every month he had he got a check from the power company because he has solar panels and we always thought he was a nut right because mm -hmm. he is kind of nutty and uh, but so, but he got a check and I'm writing one <laughs> you know, so there's some and and I'm in a great big toilet and my electric bill and my heat bill at the end of every month you know is enough to make your eyes bleed and so I have seriously been looking at some of this technology to try to figure out how you have to start over. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, you'd have to start over. The, your website, just by the way, you mentioned it, but it's morrisseybuilders.com, M-O-R-R-I-S-S-E-Y, builders.com. Cool stuff on here. It's a great website. Check them out, morrisseybuilders.com. You were talking about the house in, was it Hudson or Prescott? It's a Hudson, Wisconsin. Hudson, Wisconsin that you built, and we didn't get into the heat, right? So we got cold winters here, and you said that the house is sustainable, uh, but my question is the heat. How do you heat the house? Uh, this particular house, the strategy they used was electric mats. Uh, specifically, we would place your feet or we would walk. And so they, they put in about, um, I think it was about 10,000 watts of electric heat. Um, they needed about 5,000 watts, but they just wanted to have it strategically Extra. placed. Get, just, get 60 yeah. below. Yeah, if it gets really cold. Well, the interesting thing about the house, even if it had no electricity or no heat, because of the heat generated by the people in the house, it would never go below um, about 50 degrees. So my in-laws would be just comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> they live in Wisconsin. Yeah. They like to keep it a little chilly. Uh, strategically turning heat on here and there throughout the house. But running off of propane uh, on a house that was built in probably the, the late 80s uh, in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, how about positioning the property on the land then to take advantage of the environment? We touched on that a little bit, but um, you, you want to face it a certain direction to, to take advantage of that solar energy? Or how does that go into planning. I think I think just uh, we build projects like the passive house like we usually build some extreme um, sustainable house one or two houses a year but mm -hmm. what we do is we take those uh, lessons learned and you know building science principles things we learn from various architects and um, people working in the in the building science industry and we take that we leverage that to, to ordinary projects like room additions or you know even some of the builds sort of a more traditional house that we can build uh, more energy efficient for about you know five percent more but the uh, but the thing about it is, even they did a study uh, was about 10 years ago, just taking a regular house, not changing anything, not doing anything um, above and beyond, just taking the house and rotating it to so the south, southern exposure, shifting some of the windows to their pack, picking up some of that uh, passive sun. That house would be 20 to 25 uh, percent more energy efficient without changing anything. It's just the design. So a lot of things in the green building sustainable mm -hmm. is actually is, is on the design side. So, so so some things don't even cost more money. It's just being more thoughtful, placing the house so it's, so it's literally placed in a, in relationship to the sun and taking advantage of some of the things yeah. that are in that environment. So cool. Sean, is that something that you do then or do you have engineers that work for you to do that? Or who, who does that? Who determines that? Well, what we do is, just because we've been sort of deep into it for about 10, 12 years, usually we partner with architects most of the time, but they don't usually have the building science side or the, yeah. or some, we have passive house certification or I'm, um, I have a certification in green, from the Green Building Home Institute, things like that. So mm -hmm. we bring more of the sustainable side, more of the technical side, um, and then we blend that with the architecture though. Cool. Yeah. If I'm a listener out there right now and, uh, and I'm in an older home, and I want to try to figure out how to bring some of this technology into my life and, and into my home. How it can kind of walk us through how that process would work if they reached out to you. Uh, one of the things we do just on a regular basis, for an example, say someone wants to build a, 
you know, expand their kitchen, do a kitchen uh, remodel. So you're going to do a small addition and, and re repurpose, replan their kitchen, which is pretty common for, say, for a you know, young family, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. The kitchen is always the first thing they want to do. So it's pretty common in that situation. We may be only adding 10 to 15 percent uh, space to the house for the kitchen, but it wouldn't be uncommon that we could probably save 20 percent overall um, in their heating bill when we're done, even though the house got bigger. Basically, it's not super exciting and glamorous like uh, granite countertops and right. what, you know all these different interior things, but it, it's really the uh, air sealing the house. So basically, what most people can do, depending on where you live, is you, is you can do a performance test through XL Energy or CenterPoint. It might cost $100, $120. And that's putting the blower door on the house? Putting the blower door and getting a performance <clears throat> test. So basically, like we tune up our cars. Basically, you can tune up your house. Depending on the size of the house, you could um, you might spend four to 5000 and we'd probably just refer someone to a quality uh, performance uh, insulator. Okay. And they might spend four to $5,000, depending on the size of the house. And basically, you're going after the air ceiling. And then that house might be uh, you know, 15 to maybe sometimes as many as 30% more energy efficient, just sealing the leaks. How do you do that then? I mean, that's pretty intrusive, I got to imagine, because when you look at a, a new construction track builder, a national builder, and you go and visit uh, they're building, they're building very tight homes and they're spray foaming rim joists, they're caulking, they're doing all this stuff and a house like mine that was built in 1994, I've had the energy audit done on my house and I've seen with the infrared cameras where it's losing and it's usually at the rim joists for uh, the upper level and the main level where they didn't spray foam, they just stacked that lumber on top of it. You can walk up next to the, the, the wall and put your foot down next to the baseboards in the winter on a cold day you can feel that cold air coming in there because it wasn't spray foam. So coming back now with the insulation company, they're going to come in and they're probably going to be tearing either exterior or interior sheetrock or siding off to repurpose that insulation, or what would they do there, do you know? Um, well, typically, you know, a lot of basements are not finished, so that would be a you know, prime opportunity. If you're right. going to finish your basement, it's would hopefully. be the <laughs> spray foam. Yeah. Um, or in you know, most attics, they can go up there and, and they can, you know, what you can do in most attics is vacuum it out and then spray foam it and then re-insulate your attic. Mm -hmm. and if you can either stop the airflow at the rim or the attic or do both, there's a stack effect. So the cold air comes in at the rim, flows through the house, and goes out and, and it pulls all that warm air out. So if you can either stop it in the attic uh, or the rim, either one, it'll stop that stack effect. Of it'll, pulling, it'll stop it from coming in because it's almost in. like pressurizing the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, pressurize it flows through the house. Mm -hmm. If you can stop it one place or the other, then that'll stop that stack effect that goes in the heat. Are there still a reasonable number of uh, energy efficiency tax rebates available out there for things like this? Uh, there are some rebates, but they're usually not uh, tremendous, but depending on your energy provider or di different things in the state of Minnesota has things, but that changes quite a bit, so you have to sort of keep track of it. Again, we're talking with Sean Morrissey, MorrisseyBuilders.com, M-O-R-R-I-S-S-E-Y, Builders.com. 651-207-6023 is their number, 651-207-6023. Good news that you could do a little kitchen remodel or a, a remodel of the house and actually improve the energy performance of the house. In most cases though, like we talk about taking advantage of the environment, you might have a larger lot, a little more breathing room, you can, you have that luxury to position mm -hmm. the home on the lot where you want to, uh, but generally, if you have a Minneapolis house that was either a teardown or if there was a lot that was available, you don't really have that luxury, right? You're based on the grid of the, the streets and uh, so you have to work within the environment you're given too. What do you do there? Well, we're working on a house in actually in uh, so the south part of Minneapolis. It's a uh, it's an early uh, early 1900s house, and this person is very passionate. So they want to build uh, so it'll actually be taking the 1907 house and it'll be the first um, zero energy house in Minneapolis that's a retrofit. So they're going to restore it back to the architectural so the decor of, house, yeah. of uh, 1907. So it still looks like it belongs there. It, it'll look like 1907 mm -hmm. house. Um, it's been rented out for a while, so you know how older houses get yeah. sort of beat ups and you know sort of beaten down a little bit. So they're going to completely uh, restart. So we took off all the plaster, wood in the house and plaster. took off all that. And the homeowner took off all the wood, all the doors, and he's uh, He's retired now, so he's, he's refinishing it. So Interior. Gonna, yep, so we're going to reuse all the old trim that was originally in the house from 1907. And then we're going to basically rebuild it back inside a little match. You know, they're going to have a modern kitchen, different things yeah. like that. But basically the architectural woodwork and trim will be just like it was in 1907. And we're putting a sort of energy package, a jacket on the house, you know, the walls and the ceiling. So you do that from the inside? From the outside. From the outside. So in, in this particular thing, we're modeling how you could literally put an insulation package on an old house 
and make it more energy efficient and not disturb the inside. What's the outside look like? Uh, the outside is going to have seven inches of foam and then uh, put on you know typical old-fashioned wood cladding and so it looked like it was built okay. in 1907. But it does have a seven-inch insulation package on the outside. So what's, what's the, uh, how, how do the window jams and all of that work then? Oh my God, we're out at this. Okay, let's, let's go to break and we'll, we'll pick it up on the other side. We're going to have you hang out for a little okay. bit of the next segment, if that's okay. Sure. Morrissey Builders, it's a great conversation, uh, so we're going to extend it into the third segment of the second hour here. MorrisseyBuilders.com, M-O-R-R-I-S-S-E-Y, Builders.com. I don't know why I feel like I have to spell that every time. Two R's. <laughs> Two S is MorrisseyBuilders.com. You can call us at 612-627-8000, 612-627-8000. That number works whether we're on the air or not. Give us a call anytime, 612-627-8000, or visit online at realestatechalktalk.com. That's realestatechalktalk.com to check your home value, search for that next property, or get your financing handled. We'll be right back.